What's going on, sports card hobby family? I'm right at about 69% getting back to full health. Not quite there yet, but like I said yesterday, I'm going to push through today. No matter what, we're going to try to put some energy together. I drank a gallon of coffee, and here I am today. A little bit late today. School's closed. It's a holiday, you dumbasses. Whoa. But we're going to talk today about card cleaning. Hot topic, everyone and their mom making videos about it again. Not a new topic, but we will dive in. First, I have to thank today's video sponsor, My Card Post. Buying, selling, trading, all in one place. Subscription service, free to buy. But if you want to sell, it starts at $9 a month and it goes up to $22 a month as the tippity top. Think about how much you spend just on a sale of a card. And you look at nine to twenty-two dollars a month, and it just makes sense. Definitely check out my card post. They're building out a community, and I have done my first trade: a couple of Stranger Things cards for a couple of sports cards. It's been a good time. Definitely check out my links below to take you there. The thing I think is funniest about this topic is you're hearing both sides of the argument that are just all over the place, and actually a lot of people in favor of card cleaning or just indifferent. There's a, a pretty good chunk, I think, that are either in favor or don't care. And then there's people that, you know, do care. And, and I want to talk about my big concern. I think it's really obvious, but it's just funny to me how people just don't talk about it or just aren't willing to really kind of dive a couple of layers deeper. But to me, it just seems wildly obvious. This hobby is built on short-term gratification, as is life, it seems like today. A lot of people looking, you know, for quick quick gratification. They're looking for those quick numbers. And look, you know, flipping cards has gotten a lot harder here over the last couple of years. So the the attempt to get a 10 from these grading companies, it's at all-time highs because dollars are counting on it. Dollars that people were very easily making going back a few years. People are not as easily making those dollars now. And so you look at these different, how can I get an edge? You know, how can I get an edge in this in this game? And card cleaning pops up as a potential edge for folks that are out there. I've never done card cleaning before. I've actually never even cracked a card out of a slab. Maybe I'll try that here. You know, as I, as I kind of learn more, I might actually try cracking a couple of cards out of slabs and resubmitting just as an experiment and just kind of see whether it's resubmitting to the same company or sending to another one, just to see kind of what the results are. I got actually a PSA 6 on a card that I would love to just see if I sent it back in what would I get? What would I get from SGC? You know, just trying to kind of get a gauge on, on this stuff. But card cleaning recently, again, it's back in the news because of the one of one black prism Wemby, where the guys famously shouted out PSA card for all their help and, of course, giving them a 10, but then also Kurt's card care. And people are like, oh, what? Wait, what is it? Wait, what? And it was kind of a funny thing. Do I, do we have a video of that, Frank? I think we have a video. Crazy. PSA is the best. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Gonna get a little bit. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Okay. Hey, real quick though, I want to give a huge shout out to Kurt's Card Care. Um, Kurt, if you're watching this, your product is phenomenal. You know, I was kind of back and forth on this topic until fairly recently, a few months ago, maybe six months ago, a year ago. I was trying to understand both sides or all sides of this thing. And, it, you know, in other collectibles, I collect, I've been buying graded comic books, buying and selling graded comic books since 2018. And they allow you to clean and press books. And a lot of the business there is cracking a slab, clean and, clean and pressing it. I actually remember going back to 2020, I sold a giant size X-Men 2.5 that had gone up in price. I got it for a few hundred bucks. It had shot up to 600 bucks. And so I was going to sell that book. And I did sell it. But the person that bought it, they sent me a message saying, hey, has this book been pressed and cleaned yet? Did you press and clean it? And I actually, I took this, I took offense to it. Like, wait, is he accusing me of basically like restoring it or, or trimming it or restoring it or something like that? But no, what he was trying to figure out is, can I buy this 2.5, crack it out, press it, clean it, and maybe I'll get a four, maybe I'll get a five. And then of course it's worth a lot more money. So in comic books and other collectible spaces, this is more open. You know, people are more open to it. In cards, we're a little bit more rigid for sure. Very much more rigid. Um, and in, in comics, you can't restore, you can't add paint, you can't, you know, paper mache the thing back together. You can't add staples in, then it's restored. You know, you can't paint it back all together. So there are, there is a line, but in cards, you know, people are a lot more serious about their cards. Now, 
We get into card cleaning. I've never cleaned a card. So you're probably going to say like, dude, you've never even gone through the process. What are you talking about? I'm just going to state what I think is the obvious here, the obvious kind of what if scenario. And again, being a dad of four, being a dad of four and just being a dad, I think other dads can relate to this. When we are, we are risk managing all day, every day, whether it's for ourselves or for our kids. When your kid comes to you and is like, hey, I want to do this or that or whatever. In your mind, immediately, as a parent, you are thinking about the 20 things that can go wrong or what could go right, and you are assessing if you're going to say yes, you can go do that, or maybe, or no. And this is kind of one of those situations where I look at it, I'm like, what could go wrong with this type of situation? Now, I've heard of cards being soaked, and I think if you're just talking about water, water, and then wipe down with a um, with a microfiber cloth. Everybody does that. Everyone will do that. Actually, I don't do that. I probably should do it before I send cards in to get graded. But if there's something obvious, like there's dust or fingerprint, I'll wipe it off with a microfiber cloth. Water, okay. I guess if you're soaking in water, then I don't know what what are the elements in water. I, I don't, and I also don't even know if there would be a benefit with just water. But where it gets a little bit sticky, you take the card and put it in the sleeve, is when you start talking about adding chemicals or adding some sort of a foreign substance to the mix. If you're soaking in some sort of a magical Zelda unicorn potion, the, here's the problem. And, and here's where it actually changed my mind on it completely, where I was like, okay, I don't know if I'd like that. Orlando, Collector's Dream, he has a great YouTube channel. He had a card that he bought, graded, that looked great and then there was a stain on the back of the card that started to to come up over time years and years later so orlando's been in the hobby for a long time so he's bought these cards held them for a long period of time and it took years but it did come back so this is a graded card that's sitting in a whatever slab it was i think it was a vintage card if i remember correctly i don't know the grade or any of that but it's this thing comes back so let's just say it's in a four you know would, they, would that have graded out a four with a giant stain spot on the back of it? No, it'd probably get a, a one or get a, you know, a stain designation or something, a mark designation, whatever. It gets some sort of a, a qualifier added to it. And so that's kind of my main point here is, what if I was to take 100 cards in to go get card cleaned, and then five years, 10 years down the road, there is, of course, and then I'm reporting on this news, how there's all of a sudden these cards that are coming back and they're starting to, sh stuff starting to show up on them. You know, these, oh, all of a sudden, this this 10 has now got a stain on it, or this 10 has got a little bit of a ding on it, or the, whatever. And we've gotten so used to just looking at the grade and not focusing on the card at all. Hell, maybe people won't even care, or maybe they'll just look back and be like, oh man, they just must have got a favorable grade, even with a giant stain on the back, you know, or whatever. But I don't know. I, I would be worried about, you know, if I send off 100 cards and then five, 10 years later, you know, all of a sudden these start coming back looking weird. And then it's like, hold on a second, were these clean? But then of course, maybe it's changed hands 10 times. Maybe a lot of these people aren't even in the hobby anymore. And I think that's my main focus here is I, the card cleaning people might be the best. Maybe they do care about the cards. They want to massage them into perfection and make them as perfect as they possibly can be. But what I think is just a hunch is that most of the customers of these folks they're not looking to massage the card because that's a PC card that they're going to hold on forever and they just want that thing to look as beautiful as it possibly ever could have. No. They want the 10 and not the 9 or the 9.5. They need that 10 for resale. I think that's just the obvious assumption that I'm going to make here is that most of these are not PC cards that we're going to hold on. Until these aren't coffin cards. You're my boy, Blue. You're my boy, Blue that we're trying to hold on to, that we're getting cleaned up so that they can stay, so that when I'm buried with it, you know, when, when I'm 117 and I'm buried with it finally, that it'll look as beautiful as it possibly can. No, you know, they want to go back. This is middle-aged guys that want to, like me, you know, that want to go back and say, mommy, I got a 10. I got a 10. You know, that's really what it is. That's what it is. It's not people that, hell, for my PC cards, for a lot of the PC cards I send in, I don't care if it comes back a seven or a 10. And then there's certain cards where it's like, I'm going to, and then there's other cards that I want to sell in three months, six months, nine months, a year, whatever, five years that I'm really hoping that I do get a 10, you know, for that particular card. So I think that's the thing that we really have to assess, but we can't kid ourselves here. And I see a lot of the people that are defending the practice and they're kind of kidding themselves in my mind. It's just my opinion, just a random guy in his house talking about his opinions. 
But I don't think that it's for the hobby that they're doing this for. I think this is for the next transaction. I think it's for the next sale and that is the purpose of it. And again, I could be totally wrong. Maybe it's, you know, 40 year collectors that are sending in cards that they're going to hold on to forever and they're getting them cleaned up so they can look beautiful when they finally go to the coffin with, with us, you know, 50 years down the road. You know, I mean, maybe I'm nuts, but I think that it's for the money, for the short term transactional money. And again, my big concern here, and again, as a dad looking at all the things that can go wrong here, you know, you, you look at like the Kobe Bryant, uh, what is it, the 96 Chrome, is it the Topps Chrome card that gets that greens at Hulks? And I understand that that's just a printing thing. That's just like a Chrome card, some of them green over time. But what happens if, you know, this, these solutions end up greening or end up doing something to these cards over time? And again, maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe 10, 15, 20 years down the road, these cards look perfectly beautiful and nothing has changed. But I just keep on going back to Orlando's example of his vintage card where the stain was beautifully cleaned. It was gone. It was not noticeable. And then it came back, back from the dead. So I think it's just something to think about. I'm not pro-con, I'm not gonna sit here, and I know people be like, take a stance, speak with conviction. I haven't made up my mind on this topic, really. I think you can look at it from 10 different ways. I don't think that these people are awful people. I think they're trying to make a business and maybe they're well-meaning, but even the most well-meaning, I think you can just look at this and see, what if, what if? And again, like I said, maybe nothing comes of it down the road, but that's just my thought on this. I think it's an obvious thing to think about, something to assess for everybody. Stay healthy. Stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.